Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with the inventory system and we are going to be working on a pickup actor which when you walk over it it's going to check to see whether or not any of the slots inside of your inventory are empty and then set that slot if it's empty equal to the item that you're picking up. Now in the last video we set up a system whereby you have the different icons for your inventory system. So if you take a look at my inventory widget, go to the event graph and if you go to one of the functions here you can see that we've got some different values for each one of these slots. So our slots we've got 1 through 8 but inside of that each integer that we can put into that slot is going to have a different value in terms of the item that you're putting inside of it. So if you take a look at this, 0 is going to be our bag icon, which was our empty, 1 is going to be our door key, 2 is going to be our loot box, and lastly, number 3 is going to be our woods. So essentially what we're going to be doing is creating that pickup actor which checks to see if any of those slots are empty and then just dropping the corresponding variable ID in there to do that item. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So inside of my content browser then, what I'm going to need to do is create a blueprint actor. So just create a new blueprint class with the type actor and with this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this the name wood pickup. And with this, I'm actually just going to create a new folder with the name uh, pickup items. And then with this folder, the pickup items, I'm just going to drop my wood pickup into there. So just move it here. So that way I can find them all a little bit easier. So now what we need to do then is open this up. And then with this, we need to do a couple of things. So first things first, we need to give this some kind of physical representation and we're going to do this using a static mesh. With the static mesh selected, I'm just going to go into the details panel on the right hand side and give this a mesh and what I think I'm going to do for now is just going to be any old item. So let's see if I've got a piece of wood in here or something like that. So wood, uh, firewood rack. Um, no, let's not. I'm just going to go for a rock instead. Let's just work with a rock. So SM underscore circle rock. And I got these little rocks here. Now, this is part of the open world demo collection. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can use anything. Actually, just for the simplicity of this, I'm just going to use a little sphere. So the sphere that I'm going to use is shape sphere. And we should have this little circle. Now, what I'm going to do with this, with this little sphere, I'm going to drop it into my scene so I can get a reference to size. Now, as far as a pickup item goes, that is way too big. So what I'm going to do is just make this a little bit smaller, just like that. And then I'm also going to just center this. Now, what we also need in terms of components is a trigger box or a collision, so a box collision, which we can use to overlap with the character. So when the character overlaps with this box collision, we are going to tell it to run some code and that code is just going to tell the engine to check to see if any of the slots are empty and if they are, just fill it. So what I'm doing is just making this box collision uh, go around my little sphere here so when I walk over it, it does what we need to do. Look inside of our scene and just make sure that your sphere collision is covering all of that and we're good to go from there. What we also need to do is with our static mesh, we need to scroll down, go to collision and change it from uh, block all to no collision so that you can walk through it and pick it up. I'm just going to quickly test that as well. So I'm going to press play, choose any one of my characters, press B and my inventory is empty at the moment. That's good. If it's not, it's an easy fix, but I'm just going to close that. And we can walk over this, but at the moment it's not disappearing when we walk over it, but that is all good. So with this then, what we need to do is go to our event graph. And inside of our, our event graph, we need to get a reference to our box. And with this, with it selected on the right hand side in the details panel, 
we need to create a onComponent begin overlap event. And what this is going to do is when the player overlaps with this box, we can fire off a sequence of code. And the sequence of code that we're going to do is we first things first need to communicate with the location of those inventory item slots. And for that, for us, that is inside of our third person game mode. So cast to your third person game mode, object wildcard, just set this to get game mode. And then what we're going to do is as third person game mode, we need to get a reference to item one, item two, and just go all the way down through to eight, but we'll hook the rest of those up in a minute. So what we're gonna do first things first then is run a branch check. And we just need to check to see whether or not our inventory item one is equal to zero, which is basically checking to see whether or not it's empty. Because if you remember, our item ID for empty was zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a integer equals so maybe let's just drag out from inventory item one and get equals and then it should look like this and what we need to do is with this if it's equal to inventory item uh, if inventory item one is equal to zero meaning it's empty what we're going to do is simply tell it to set inventory item one so as first person character game uh, sorry as third person game mode get a reference to that and set inventory item one to whatever your ID is for your wood. So we need to find that out and we can do that back inside of our blueprints and open up your inventory widget. Go to graph and then if you find your wood, which is the item we're picking up, just follow that through the return node and up through here and you can see that's number three. So with this, we are gonna set inventory item one equal to three. And then with this, we're just gonna hook it up to true. What we're also gonna do for false is then just move on from there and we are going to go to branch and that's where we just copy all of this. So inventory item two, condition, and then true should be set inventory item 2 because it's a second slot and then just move on and do this and what you need to do is just copy and paste this and keep doing this until you get all the way down to the eighth slot so what I'm going to do is just quickly create quite a few of these so I'm going to create eight of these little branch nodes so I've got four there hooking them all up into the false so if the slot isn't empty that it needs it's just gonna keep going down, keep going down, just like this. And with every item, you're not actually gonna have to keep going through this process because you'll be able to copy this code and then just change the inventory item ID here, which is really simple. So we just check how many, how many I've got here now. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need one more and we're good there. And then what I've gotta do then is just start getting all of these. So I'm going to, as third person character, or as first per third person game mode, get inventory item three, and then get inventory item four, and just do the same thing all the way down to eight. And it may take you a little while to do this, but at least you only have to do this once. But once you get there, you will have what is essentially a working inventory. So we're almost there, seven, and one more is number eight. Now, if you do get a little bit confused as to what I'm doing, what I'll do is I'll give you a moment to look at my code so you can pretty much just copy that. Um, but the simple logic, what we're doing here is we are essentially checking to see whether or not the slot is empty, empty, empty. If it is, we're filling it with the item. If it isn't, it's moving on to the second slot, the third slot, the fourth slot, the fifth slot, all the way up to eight. And when it gets to eight for the false, that is gonna be 
when the player has no inventory space. So I'm going to quickly join these up, one to each of these little condition nodes, just like that, and I think I'm going to need a couple more. I'm going to move these down as well just to keep it nice and clean, but it should start to fall into place just as it is here. So with this into there, so all of the falses should be going down, and then with this, each of these slots should just be going into the top of each one of these conditions. And if you've got the right amount, it should join up pretty simple, just like this. And then if you just move these over just to keep it clean, like that, and we're perfect, and we're good. So what we need to do now then is just do this bit here where it sets all of the stuff. So with this, we've done one and two already. We're going to set inventory item three. Set inventory item four. Set inventory item five. Set inventory item six. Set inventory item seven, and then one more set inventory item eight. So now we just need to make sure these are all in the right place. So over here, we are just going to uh, find number three, which was this one. So hook this up into the third one of these branch nodes. Find number four, which is here. Hook this up into the fourth number five, which is this one, hook this up there, find number six, which is just here, find number seven, which is over here, and then lastly, number eight, we need to move this down, and what it should look like, your code should look like this, just a bunch of branches with all the corresponding numbers just going down, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then with the item ID for all of these, because we're working with the wood pickup, we are just gonna set this to free on each and every one of these. So what it's gonna do, now then, if we compile this and then jump into our game, open up our warrior class, and then if we run over to this item, it's gonna pick us up some wood. Now notice it's going to give us lots of wood, and that is because we didn't destroy the actor after we picked it up. But normally it should just give us one, and the way that we're going to get around this is by going into our pickup items, wood pickup, and then with this, after it's done all of this, what we're going to do is just right click and type in destroy actor, and you want this to work on either the end of the true or on the end of the false down here so it so it disappears either way so let's just do that so just make it go into this one destroy actor node and this destroy actor node is just going to make it disappear so that we can't use it more than once to get more than one piece of wood out of this pickup and then with this we are going to compile it and also uh, we are going to leave that. We're gonna leave the false because if the bag's full, we don't want them to be able to pick it up. And then if we close this, press play, open up our warrior class now. And if we run over this, it's gonna destroy the item and we've only collected one piece of wood. So that is pretty much everything for that system working there. Now there's still a little bit more that we need to do in the sense that if you remember before, we created this loot bag pickup widget, but what we do have and what we've created with this pickup item is the basis for our inventory system. What we need to do now then is if you kill an enemy, we need to tell it to give you some random items, but that is something that we're looking forward to doing later on. But these pickup items that I've created here is just something that you can scatter around the level that is entirely up to you. But once again, guys, I hope you enjoy your inventory. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. 
This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.